Hello everyone and welcome back to another Wizard 101 video. Today we're going over another one of the Test Realm updates and kind of the last one I can actually go over in a video. There's obviously some other ones like PvP and stuff like that, but realistically I'm not the PvP guy. So if you want the PvP updates, go to any of the other PvP people on this platform and get it from there. But in case of me and PvE updates, this is kind of the last one we have. Obviously there's some other future plan stuff, but this is the last concrete new feature we have and that is cantrips now what i want to go over today is i want to go over what cantrips are what cantrips kind of is as a system the potential of it whether it's good whether it was implemented properly all that kind of stuff so there's that one thing i'd like to mention real quick i still haven't decided yet i'm going to be busy the next week or so and it's possible that i may miss the next upload this is obviously going to be uploaded on what tuesday tomorrow but there is also a possibility that I don't actually have a video for Thursday. We'll have to see. But as of now, that's up in the air. We'll kind of see, you know, it's it's for future plans. But without further ado, let's get into the video and get into what cantrips are. Now, I'm assuming that this is how it's going to be in the live realm, too. But it's also possible that it's not. But basically, Abner K. Doodle is here, which is a mirror of the character Abby K. Doodle. If you don't know her, that's possible that you don't because you didn't actually see her. But she's someone who introduced you to side quests in like the first little section of wizard city it's very easy that you might have missed her because you might have done it before she was even invented but i'm assuming this is a relative of sorts so let's talk to them see what they have to say cantrips 101 all right, so after talking to Abner K. Doodle here, he kind of gives you the rundown. Basically, cantrips are a sort of fun magic, as he calls them. It is a side magic that is superfluous to actual magic itself. So it's not under a specific branch. It's just kind of stuff wizards can do when they're not in battle, right? So let's go to Pigsburg Academy and learn a bit more about it. You can see up here we have a cantrip XP bar and whatnot where we can kind of get the laydown. So here we go, casting a cantrip to teleport to the guy that it's in Pigswick Academy that we can learn from. So we go here. Boom, Hampshire Buttersfield here. <laughs> Oi, what's all this then? I asked Abner to send any promising new students my way. So I was expecting someone sooner or later. All right, so you can see here we learned the basic cantrips and then he's like, okay, cast some cantrips. So let's do that right here. You can see we learned flip, we learned school spirit and we learned magic touch. So flip, you can see here cast it do that funny animation and boom your character does a flip that is kind of an obscenely long animation but that's okay oh it, yeah no okay you do that you have school spirit so you can cast a kind of school spirit type beat boom cool cool as always and then magic touch which you can click and send a, a magic touch out in front of you like that so that's the cool little basics and those are the first kind of steps down we need to cast the magic touch at this chest i just realized which i did not cast it at i cast it in the complete wrong direction boom and that's the basics of cantrips down. So now that we kind of went over the introduction, let me give you a lay down of what cantrips are and give you kind of what they are useful for. Cantrips are basically an out of battle kind of magic. They're kind of these little side things that you don't need to do, but they're there and they add a little bit of flavor to the game because obviously we would cast magic beyond just in battle, right? Like we're wizards, we cast magic all the time and that wasn't true until this was kind of activated. Now the thing to know about this is that first off there is a cantrip level up here at the top you can see i'm a cantrip novice currently eight out of 50 of the way to the next level and you can see that each of the cantrips actually costs energy so there's another thing to use energy for that exists you can see here i could pretty easily probably get it up to level two but that is the basic point of them is you can use energy to do these little out of battle things now real quick i want to take a little side note to explain a funny thing if you didn't know basically when king's isle first released cantrip trips they accidentally made it so that the xp was 1500 and if this doesn't immediately set alarm bells off i don't know how but basically they accidentally made it and there's probably still a subset of people that believe that that is what the legitimate cantrip xp was supposed to be but it is not that was a glitched xp and 
it definitely wasn't supposed to be 1500. You can see it's been since changed to 50. But the gist of it was is that it took a long time. And then obviously with energy being a refillable thing and then it taking energy to cost them, it took a long while. I believe I saw the Atmoplex did like a calculation on it and it would take about three years of energy to actually max out cantrips, which is a little funny statistic, but obviously isn't entirely relevant. Now let's get into the other cantrips and I'll go into their possible uses. So you can see here, Hampshire sells some other things and some other cantrips that are pretty interesting. They're locked behind a level and they kind of have a gold. So there's a reason to actually level it up. So first off, you'll levitate your school book, which is just, you know, like a pretty cool little thing you can do. We have float, which is reclining midair. Rainmaker, which summons a small rainstorm. Paper, displays paper, which beats rock. Rock, which beats scissors. And scissors, which beats paper. So you can play rock, paper, scissors with your friends if you want to, which is pretty funny. Uh, if you want to do that, I might learn them just because I think it would be funny to challenge random people to rock, paper, scissors. I would always lose because I'm really bad at rock, paper, scissors, but that's okay. You have minor invisibility, which is invisibility for 60 seconds. Reveal invisible, which makes nearby invisible players visible. So this is pretty cool if you want to do some like hide and seek with your friends or something like that. Pretty interesting. You have roll dice, which is rolling a six sided dice. So if you want to gamble, you can gamble kids in your children's wizard 101 game. So that's pretty cool. We have major invisibility, which is 15 minutes of invisibility or until you move. So basically the gist of it is, is you're invisible for 15 minutes or you can cancel the spell by moving if you don't want to be invisible anymore. Now here's where things get really interesting and what I want to mention is the second mark and the second recall. This is really interesting and something that I really want to point out because this is actually super useful. If you guys don't use marks and recalls normally, you definitely should. I can't stress enough how useful these are and how much they speed up questing. Without a doubt, this would speed up questing even more, especially if you already know the quests and you already know where you need to go. This can come very much in handy in so many cases. I'm pretty confident that I'll be grinding up my cantrips to at least level six just so I can get this, just because I do think it is a pretty useful skill to have, and it's just overall a really interesting kind of thing. Now let's get into the next part, which is the cantrip crafting station. This is temporary cantrips that you can make that aren't actually trainable spells. You can just craft them using materials. They all look pretty cheap, or at least most of them look pretty cheap. So let's go through them real quick, and I'll tell you which ones are pretty useful. First off, you have teleport to the Arcanum, which I don't think is really useful considering obviously you can just do that with Spiral Thor and this actually costs energy. So there's no reason to do this. If commons, same thing, you wouldn't use energy here. This one's really interesting is Fishing Luck 1, 2, 3, and 4. You can see that this actually costs a lot of energy. So this one, you need to be level 8 cantrip, a cantrip champion. You need the drop B base and false cat shark to actually craft it. And it costs 60 energy, which is a very steep cost. But what it does is it creates a beneficial fishing luck radius. So I'm assuming for a time you can stand inside that radius and get a beneficial fishing luck, which is not only useful for you, but useful for other wizards around you as well. Next, we have healing one, two, three, and four, which I'm assuming what this does is this will make it so that you can heal and regenerate naturally outside of combat. So you don't need to go right running around collecting wisps, you can just actually heal, which is pretty cool. You have health and mana, which is the same thing, except it's mana as well, which is actually pretty useful. You know, you never know when you might need mana and you might have ran out of potions. So pretty cool and would be useful in dungeon scenarios. You have mana, which I think is probably the least useful of them all, because obviously mana isn't going to be used widely unless it's for marks. So there's that, but it's not like super useful. You have teleport to Northgard, teleport to Regent Square, teleport to Basilica, teleport to Jay Palace Oasis, all not very useful cantrips. I don't even recommend using these because it's just a complete waste of energy. And then finally, you have Sneak, which briefly sneaks past enemies. This one's actually really interesting and one I'm super interested in because sneaking past enemies, I'm assuming this means that in situations where you couldn't possibly get past an enemy, you can now get past an enemy, which actually in some cases might break some earlier dungeon instances where you don't actually need to beat a boss. You just need to get to a door behind them that's usually impassable. I'm very interested to see in how they actually try to balance balance this and whatever, but that is the basic gist of it. All right, so that is the basic overview of cantrips. Let me give you the kind of rundown of my thoughts on this system and what I think it is. Now, cantrips, I actually think is a really needed and fresh addition to this game. I think for a long time, we kind of need out of combat things and we just need a little bit of flavor because obviously all we've really had up until now is like just random emotes that we can use and stuff like that, which just realistically aren't that 
cool, right? They're just random emotes. Like, no one thinks, oh, yeah, the dance emote's the best emote in this game, and it's really fun outside of combat. You know, no one thinks that. But cantrips, I could see people being like, okay, there's some cool cantrips, like school spirit. That one's cool, you know? You can hang out with your fellow myth wizards by casting this giant myth symbol, which looks really sick, by the way. Can I just say that? I think it's really cool, and it's very easy to tell that they put a lot of time into making this and making it actually feel like it fits into the world. On top of that, there's actually some very useful ones as well. So it's not even just simply a side system where it's like completely useless to the average player. There's some actually very useful ones as well. Like fishing luck is extremely useful to people who like fishing. There's the sneak past enemies one, which I think opens up a lot of possibilities that people might not actually immediately think about. There's the regenerate health, which is super useful. And then finally, there's the second mark and recall, which I think is going to be extremely, extremely useful to at least players like me who use marks a lot. So I think generally that is my overview of the system in of itself. I think it's really going to come in handy for a lot of people and a lot of people are going to like it. I think King's Isle has really actually done a good thing here and I'm really happy that they're kind of investing into this and leaning into more side systems because I think that's what this game needs right now. This game really lacks a lot of post-game content and really lacks a kind of incentive to play beyond kind of the grindy aspect. Obviously this pvp but beyond that like what do pve players like me have to do really just create new wizards that's kind of the repetitiveness i'm happy that they're trying to lean into kind of a way to negate that and to make it so that there's a reason to continue on the wizards and not just keep making new wizards right and i hope that they make more systems like that in the future and i am really excited for them but that's really it for today let me know in the comments below what you think this video might not actually end up making it into a 10 minute video but we'll have to see obviously i don't exactly Exactly no, but I do want to know your opinions below. Like, what do you think of cantrips? Do you agree and think this is a good system or do you think it's just a waste of time? Are you going to try it out? Whatever. I'm really interested in what you have to say, but otherwise that's it. Thank you all for watching. Make sure to drop a like, hit the sub button if you want to, but otherwise it's fine. Have a fantastic day and thank you all for watching. Adios.